Ha'ena, the breath of the sun. We're going to have to take you back to the first picture. Ha'ena is the breath of the sun. Let's say Ha'ena. I am a Hawaiian culturalist, and I'm very, very passionate about the longevity of Hawaiian culture and the integrity about Hawaiian culture. Everything I say today is from a Hawaiian point of view or Hawaiian perspective. The sun is called Kanihualani. That's the chant I was just doing. And it, it, we have many, many sun chants that honor, honors the sun. The sun is our universal element that provides a corridor or a space for the movement of time. I'm going to show you three motifs of the sun that is in our um, chants, in our songs, but the whole idea that everything around us has to do with the sun. The first motif is a what we call a popohe lehua, or a full bloom lehua, representing that dome of the sky, that time when the sun rises in the east off of the lehua island, which is Hawaii, and eventually sets in the west on the island that we call Lehua, at the uh, west of our um, archipelago. Our, um, the next picture is Manamana. The uprights that you see here are what we call Manamana. And they can be found on most of our islands if we're looking for them. If we're not looking for them, they're almost invisible. But what the Manamana has to do is provide a quarter for the sun. And it's either in an ahupua'a, it's on an island, on the island of Mokumanamana, it's all over the island. It's up on Mauna Kea, it's up on Mauna Loa. This particular Manamana is in Kona, at Keoho, at Kahalu'u actually. And the Manamana, this particular Manamana is also gives us that space of, or the time of the equinox. And so we have two other manamanas on the side of it. One has to do with the rising of the sun in the, um, in the solstice, the, the summer solstice, which is to the right of it. And the other has to do with the rising of the sun in the winter solstice. Okay. And within this corridor, it tells us where our boundaries are. This is where our life is. Whether we are, again, in an Aupua'a or whether we are on a particular island, whether we are on, our, on Mauna Kea, we have these signals that say, this is your boundary. This is where the sun will move from this stone to that stone and going back to the other stone. This particular one, as I said, is on the equinox. This is Ha'ena. Can we all say Ha'ena? Ha'ena, as I said, is the breath of life. Ha meaning breath, life, spirit, all of those things that begins somebody's cycle or something's cycle. Uh, ena ha is a word that means intense. And usually if you have ena as the intensity, it has to do with heat. And this particular heat has to do with the sun. Uh, Ha'ena is the breath of the sun when it first peaks from the horizon early in the morning. And the day begins. And when it's in the west and it's going down, the, the picture that you see on the bottom is the setting sun. And the day ends. So that very intense breath of the beginning and also the intense breath of the ending is very important in all of our lives. 
whether we're humans, whether we're a cockroach, or whether we are a lizard, whether we are a shark, that very first breath and the last breath is an important breath. But that also is symbolized in the, uh, in the sun. The sunrise for, for Haena, that very, very first breath, is the breath that begins the stirring of the air. It begins to titillate the, the uh, earth to give up its breath. And so the earth begins to give up its breath in the cycles that we know as a laka. Can you say laka? Laka is the beginning of transpiration and evaporation. And so this begins at the beginning of the day when the sun rises, And the mist that you see rising and is called the ohu. Can you say ohu? This particular mist uh, ascends. It's light. It's coming from the earth. What the earth is doing is giving up. It is a sacrifice that is going on at this particular time with the sun. After the ohu rises, it gets to an atmosphere in right above of the earth, and it begins to collect all of the water molecules. And after a well, while, maybe about 12 o'clock, or in some places, 2 o'clock, it begins to descend. The descension is called a lono process. Can you say lono? Good. It's a lono process, but the mist that's descending is laden with water. And the mist is called uhivai. Say uhivai. In some places, noi. It's noi? Mahalo. Okay. So we have two kinds of uh, mist that's going on here. One that's ascending, and which is the sacrifice, and the other that's descending, which is the gift of life. And so this is a reciprocal kind of process that's going on every day in our lives. And especially in these islands, because that's all I know. I only know the islands. I'm sure it's going on somewhere else in the world, but I only know the islands. It goes on every day in our lives, and it's a very necessary process. What we have on this land, all over us, are what we call ohivai. And ohivai are water collectors. They're, it's not the big rain that's coming down, but it's the mist that's coming, that's descending. And so we have ohivai. This particular ohivai is a spider web. And it's a spider web from, from one of the mountains on Hawaii Island. And it's an indigenous spider. It may be endemic, I don't know, I'm not sure. It's an indigenous spider, it's a huge spider that only comes out at night. And it makes this huge web. But the web collects water and methodically allows the drips of the water to go back into the ground. And this is what feeds our aquifers. And so this happens constantly, every day. So when you have something like this that's happening constantly, every day, whoever we are that has brains need to know that this has to continue. Okay? So what does the hula have to do with all of this? What does the hula have to do with laka? Have to do with the, the, the reciprocal nature of the atmosphere and the earth. Well, hula is a reflection of our Hawaiian environment. Um, it has to do, the Hawaiian environment, as I told you, has to do with the constancy of life for all life forms. And when there is a constancy and, and a necessity for life, Eventually, what you have is a ceremony. Okay. And one of the things that I talked about earlier is that the giving up of this breath of the earth is called laka. Laka is also the deity of hula. So what does a deity of hula have to do with the giving up of the breath of the earth? It has to do a lot. It has to do with ceremony. This is a block of wood that, is, that we get from the uh, llama tree. The llama is an ebony wood, and it is a physical manifestation of laka. 
And so you take this wood and you put it on what we call a kuahu. And a kuahu is an altar, it's, but it's a hula altar. And so now we're coming into the relationship of laka, the hula altar, but what does it have to do with hula? Okay. But it is on a hula altar. Um, the, the dance, as I said, is about our elements. It's about the, the rising sun, the setting sun, the many phases of the moon. It's about the sharks that, that uh, migrate and, and find the hot spots under the ground. It's about the eruption uh, cycles. It's about the growth of, of the lehua. It's about the, the growing of a large forest. That's what hula is about. 90% of our chants are exactly about that. It's about the earth and its cycles. It's about the earth and life. And so when we get to, to hula and we look at the history of the events of our chants and our songs that we are doing, we, it allows, what it allows for the hula dancer is to participate in this reciprocal um, cycles. And so when we get into this mindset of reciprocal cycles, we have the chanter or we have the dancer who has to be able to focus on what he is dancing about. And uh, so the, the chanter then begins to focus in whichever way he can focus. He listens to the beat of the drums, the beat of the ipu. He knows what he has to do. He knows what the chant is all about. And then it begins. What he does next is prepare his feet. He adorns his feet with kupe'es. He binds it. And the feet is important first to adorn because it is what um, is, uh, keeps the rhythm. And it is what it is attached to the earth. The next thing he binds or she binds is the wrist. And the hands are the ones that tell the story. So the wrist has to be bound. The next thing bound is the pa'u, or the skirt that he wears. And he usually binds it with a cord, uh, with a hau cord. The next thing the dancer does, it, he collects greenery from the forest, becomes part of the larger forest. And he adorns his head and his neck with this greenery. And then the dance begins. The dancer then realizes that he is into the dance. He's beginning to feel the essence of the dance. He's beginning to relive that event that he was taught for many years. And this event has happened many generations before that, bringing it back to his day, his time, and to him or her, themselves. <laughs> the dancer becomes the dance. He becomes that lava flow that, that's spewing all over the land that's flowing down to the ocean. The dancer at this point realizes that he, is, he has gone through the whole idea of sacrifice, that process of laka. At this moment, the dancer is mentally, spiritually, physically in tune to the event, and the dancer has transcended dance and has become the laka. We have to give, be able to give back to this reciprocal nature of our environment and uh, of the earth and the, and the atmosphere. And it all begins with ha-ena, the first breath of the sun, when it titillates the earth to give up its breath. It has to do with sacrifice. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what hula is all about. 
has to do with sacrifice. And some of us who have kuahus, who have uh, the, the laka sitting there, do it because of that. Mahalo. Thank you.